A Stalin named Kipri was given to Vasily Lomachenko's father for his 50th birthday. Anatoly Nikolaevich does not care much for riding. Vasily, however, feels quite comfortable in the saddle. A couple of times he was almost thrown off the horse, but he enjoys the risk. He enjoys the adrenaline rush. In September of 2018, Vasily Lomachenko was at the end of his extremely long vacation. He had been relaxing for almost four months. He traveled, hunted, fished, swam and exercised only to keep himself in a good shape. Being in that relaxed and blissful state, Vasily learned that now he was officially considered the best boxer in the world. In the updated rankings of pound for pound of the American magazine, The Ring, Lomachenko is for the first time number one. I have come here for recognition. So what could be higher than when a reputable media and authoritative society recognize you as the best fighter of the year? And then others call you one of the best in the pound for pound. It cannot leave me indifferent. It means that I am on the right track, that I am doing the right thing. In September of 2018, the best boxer in the world was working in the same place with the same coach as five or even 15 years earlier, on the coast of the Black Sea, in the company of his father, who was also recognized as the best on the planet. Anatoly is a genius, not only with, with Loma, but the way he helps out with uh, the other Ukrainians, Usyk, Vodsyk, I mean, he really is a mastermind with tactics. Roman Shanko's, yeah, he's number one, he's the best. And I think his father is the best too. Uh, his father is really a mastermind when it comes to boxing. And the father is dedicated to his son, but if he wanted to open up a business training fighters, he would have 40 or 50 fighters wanting to train him because everybody in boxing realizes how smart and good he is as a trainer.
On the 12th of May 2018, the best boxing tandem in the world was preparing to enter the ring. The best trainer and the best boxer of the previous year, in the opinion of the Boxing Writers Association of America. That evening, Lomachenko planned to rewrite the history of boxing again. In case of victory over Jorge Linares, he was going to establish a record in a minimal quantity of matches necessary to gain champion titles in three weight classes. It was a big step for Vasily. He was coming up from 130 pounds to 135 from junior lightweight to lightweight. And in Linares, he was fighting not just any lightweight, but probably the best lightweight in the division. So I was very nervous going into that fight because in back of my mind, I was wondering whether uh, Vasily had bitten off more than he could chew. The date and the place of the fight were known even before Lamachenko knew who his opponent was going to be. The negotiations were held with several boxers, and the main factor in the decision was Vasily's desire to rise once again in the class and meet with the champion. It was agreed with the Venezuelan Jorge Linares, the holder of the belt in WBA and unofficial title of the strongest lightweight fighter on the planet. And the main competition of Lamachenko in the pound-for-pound -pound ranking was again watching him on all the media events. The great, we're a few days away from giving the fans a beautiful fight. Madison Square Garden, one of the greatest fighters that ever come out of Ukraine, one of the greatest fighters that ever come out of Venezuela. Uh, all right. No, one more. No Maschenko, Linares time, the king. No Maschenko, that's because no more. After Saturday night, It'll be Jorge Linares that we'll be talking about. Linares is a natural lightweight, tall and sturdy. He looked stronger than Lamachenko. But Vasily was still an obvious favorite of the match. Before that fight, he was in the top three of the world's best boxers across weight classes. And in the opinion of some experts and boxing colleagues, Vasily is already number one in pound for pound. Both Linares and Lamachenko fought for the first time on the big arena of the New York complex of Madison Square Garden. In the Ukrainian's career there had been bigger stages and fights with bigger audiences. But then Vasily was fighting in the undercard and that evening his match was the main event of the night. and we sold almost 13,000 tickets. But remember, the fight was on ESPN, which meant that anybody could stay home and watch it free. So the fact that 13,000 people wanted to come to Madison Square Garden to see him in, in the flesh, so to speak, fight, I thought was a great accomplishment. It's not enough for Vasily to be merely a champion. He aspires to be the first, to be a fighter who does something extraordinary. Now he aims for a record again. He pumps himself up for the fight. He's focusing. He hears nothing. And on the other side of the wall, his nickname is shouted more and more loudly. The nickname that is now famous all around the world. The public in New York is spoiled for mega fights. And the boxers are both foreigners. A Ukrainian against a Venezuelan. Nevertheless, the most prestigious arena of the world is filled to the brim. It is hosting one of the principal matches of the year. This is a big arena. 
This is Madison Square Garden, this is New York. Of course, we were thrilled to learn that all the tickets were sold out and that the spectators mainly came to see Vasily and not Linares. Lamachenko just started to speed up when the unexpected occurred. In the sixth round, Vasily found himself in a knockdown. It happened for the first time in his professional boxing career. There is a term for this, flash, and it was controversial. A lot of factors came together. I was going forward both feet of the ground, and in that moment he got me. He got me and caught me on the counter move. It was one of those quick things where he was fine right away. Uh, and like I said, he showed another dimension to a top pro. I felt relaxed after the second round because Loma looked like he was in control. And then when he knocked down, I mean, that sent a shock through my system. Not only my heart, but some other insights went up to here. And I wasn't sure how he would react to that knockdown. Some fighters go to pieces. I now recall that everyone in the room was thrilled. Oscar De La Hoya himself was jumping so hard he almost hit his head on the ceiling. But I looked at Anatoly Lomachenko. He was very calm. He showed the heart of a champion. And he got off the floor and he acted like a pro. He behaved like a fighter, he behaved like a champion. You know, he got knocked down, he got up. He, you know, made sure he didn't make that mistake again. After a minute break, after some rest, I entered the next round as if it was the first. And I started my work from the very beginning. The fight ended on the 10th round, 
Lenaris missed a punch and the lever and could not continue the match. Lomachenko won again ahead of time and, no, and again WBA set a record. Magazine, lightweight champion of the world, Vasily Lomachenko! I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant performance because it's very, very easy if you're coasting to victory to continue to coast. It is not easy when you experience adversity and you rise from the adversity to conquer your opponent. It was a valuable experience. It shook me up. One must always be focused, concentrate, all the way through the fight. The first knockdown in his career was just a small smear on the joy of the victory and the impressions of the match. But it was not the only and not the main misadventure of Vasily in his fight with Linares. Throughout almost all the fight, Vasily was forced to fight with only one arm the left one. In the second round, and it was visible, I did a hook and I felt that something tore up there. After 30 seconds, I did that hook again and I realized that I could not feel my arm. It went loose right away. Then I didn't use the right hook again until the very last moment. I turned it back in only when I knew I had to tear up the fight. He felt the discomfort in the shoulder at once. He said after the match that his shoulder ached. When Igus Klimas, his manager, called me to say that Loma had hurt his shoulder and it could be serious. I said, don't let him do anything. Let me make some telephone call. Bob Arum, Bob Arum said at once, go to America. The best doctor is Neil Alatrash. He operated on many Pacquiao's shoulder. He did Oscar De La Hoya's surgery. He did the surgery on Kobe Bryant's knee. The surgery was successful, but the rehabilitation took several months. It was the first time that Lamachenko had to stay away from the ring for such a long time. He undertook his rehabilitation in Belgorod Nistrovsky, but often went to Kiev to consult the doctor. On those occasions, he always paid a visit to Alexander Usyk's training camp. Because of the trauma, Lamachenko and his father had more free time. And it was Papachenko who prepared Vasily's best friend to fight for the title of the undisputed world champion. And Lamachenko personally supported Alexander during his training and on his match in Moscow. After Usyk's victory, friends went on a vacation together. Vasily went back to his regular training only at the beginning of autumn. His forced rest had lasted for four months. It's all for the best. If that happened, such was the will of God. So it was necessary up there. During the rehabilitation, Vasily finally got a dog. As he had always wanted a pure breed German Shepherd. He took Lord not as a puppy, but as an eight months old adolescent. That was what his friends advised him, and they were the ones who chose the dog for Vasily. I have some good friends among the border guards who helped me with this issue. 
They picked a dog with a good pedigree, pure blood. They also prepared him up to the moment when he knew what to do, how to respond to commands. I'd like to say thank you to the guys from the Border Guards for their excellent choice of the dog, for the great blood for Lord that they chose and gave me the dog. While I was at home on rehabilitation, we got to know each other. I worked with him for several months. Now he sees me as his master. But we had a period when we were proving to each other who was the leader of the gang. There was an incident when we were on the inlet. I threw a stick and Lord wasn't obeying. And then he started attacking me, tried to take away the stick, biting and scratching. The trainer with whom I worked, he told me, this is the moment when you need to show the dog who is the boss, who is the leader. At that moment you need to take the dog by the scruff of the neck, push him to the ground and hold. He'll resist, but you must overpower him. I pushed him and he bit, fought and tried to get up. But at last he froze. He looked at me and I was looking at him. Then I let go of the Lord and he calmed down. At that moment I demonstrated to the dog that I was the master in our relationship and I was the leader. In the American city of Oxnard, Vasily traditionally holds the final part of the training camp. Sometimes it looks more like a circus performance than a boxing training session. We talk about it so loud like I'm some kind of a unique juggler. I do elementary things, they're very simple, anyone can do them if only they set their mind to it. Oh my god! Oh my god! This is the devil! <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't this, but look, look, did you see it? Oh my god! <laughs> no, that is a trick. There is, there is some, this no, is real. No, no, it's real. No way. No. Oh wow! Vasily? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh, wow. Wow. You know what is funny? Because they make it look so easy. Like you take the ball and just this. Hollywood is so close. And more and more often, Vasily's training sessions are visited by famous actors and other celebrities. Vasily is becoming more and more famous. He's more and more of a celebrity himself. If there is a saying that money attracts money, then celebrities attract celebrities. The fact that celebrities visit Lomachenko means that his uniqueness is recognized not only by the boxing community. His unique talent added to his maximum ambition. He doesn't just want to win. He wants to do something special in every fight. Championship goes without saying, but it's just a byproduct of the primary goal. The main aim is progress, new skills, new records, new training elements that his father comes up with, everything that pushes him forward. Yes, every session I do some new exercises, new movements, but it's not my idea, not my achievement and not my desire. It's clear who is behind it. Father constantly comes up with new exercises. Maybe he just wants to push me off the balance? Thank you.
The greatest quality a pro has, it's not their speed, it's not their power, whatever they do, it's not, sometimes it's not even the intellect. And he's got a great intellect with the help of his father, bringing him up the way he's brought him up. But it's in behavior. It's, it's in the ability, the quality to behave like a pro. The media training session during the preparation isn't obligatory. Sometimes it could get in the way of the actual training process, but that's the price a boxer should pay for his popularity. It was a very close fight. Yeah. Lomachenko and his team always invites mass media to his camp in Oxnard. And with every camp, the number of journalists and camera increases. <laughs> I don't think it's that important for him. I think it's crucial for him to leave his mark, to leave Lomachenko's name in the history of boxing. If my goal was to make money, I would have asked for a million-dollar contract, but I did not do that. Maybe because I, definitely because I have other goals in professional sports. I think that what I do, what I can do, what we have accomplished, there is a big part, a big achievement of my father. And I want his name to remain in history. That is why I'm doing everything to remain in history. Быть в истории. I believe in Lomachenko, I think before these, everyone knew how good he was. When I remember getting people yelling at me saying, what are you doing? I had Lomachenko in my top 10 pound for pound when he had, I think it was one pro fight. And people were, what are you doing? How could you do that? I said, well, give it some time. Maybe you'll figure it out. Maybe you understand what I think I understand already. Nobody who follows boxing can help but be impressed by how Loma fights, by the technical skill that he has, and we haven't seen that maybe since the first young Ali back in the 1960s. As soon as you pronounce the word boxing, names comes up. Floyd, Mayweather, Muhammad Ali, Tyson, Foreman. I think that is Vasily's goal, that as soon as people start talking about boxing, they remember the name of Lamachenko.